This is a story about the Everglades, about restoration, and about how right now, our best chance at saving the Everglades may be about to fail. Historically, the Everglades used to cover most of South Florida, stretching from present-day Orlando all the way south to the Florida Keys. Water from the Kissimmee River would fill Lake Okeechobee and then flow south into the River of Grass. But sadly, this is no longer what the Everglades looks like. Today, water can no longer freely flow south from Lake Okeechobee, and the Everglades agricultural area, owned mostly by subsidized sugar companies, sits right where the River of Grass used to begin. The water in Lake Okeechobee has been contaminated with all kinds of nutrients from agricultural fertilizers, like nitrogen and phosphorus, so much that the water in the lake is considered far too polluted to be sent directly on to the Everglades like it used to. Instead, we hold all of this polluted water in Lake Okeechobee until the water levels become so high that billions of gallons of polluted water have to be dumped down the St. Lucie and Caloosahatchee rivers and out into the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico. Not only is this a waste of precious drinking water, but it also damages our coastal estuaries, kills fish, and contributes to toxic red tide that endangers nearly 8 million Floridians up and down the coast. Meanwhile, the Everglades is desperate for fresh water. Everglades National Park receives less than half of the water it once did, and what's left of the historic river of grass will run dry if it doesn't get more water soon. So why can't we just clean all of this extra water and send it south to where it belongs? Well, we've been trying. What we need is a place to store this extra water south of Lake Okeechobee, so that it can be cleaned and then used for both drinking water and for Everglades restoration. And Florida voters are on board. In 1996, 68% of Florida voters passed the Make the Polluter Pay Amendment to the Florida Constitution, which states that those in the Everglades agricultural area who cause water pollution within the Everglades shall be primarily responsible for paying the costs of the abatement of that pollution. Four years ago, U.S. Sugar negotiated a contract with the state of Florida, agreeing to sell 46,000 acres of their land, 26,000 of which is directly south of Lake Okeechobee, a critical location for Everglades restoration. With this 26,000 acres, we could create the water storage areas we need so that we won't have to dump precious fresh water into the ocean. Last November, 75% of Florida voters amended the state constitution again, this time to pass the Florida Water and Land Conservation Amendment, which funds the Land Acquisition Trust Fund to acquire, restore, improve, and manage conservation lands, including the Everglades. This amendment ensures that the state has the money to carry out Everglades restoration. For the first time, we had the money, the land, and the water to make a big difference in the fight to save the Everglades. But now, Sugar's trying to go back on their half of the deal. Since 2010, shortly after they agreed to sell the land, Sugar has been lobbying the Florida government to not go through with the deal. They spent nearly $11 million on campaign contributions in 2014 alone. Sugar has already signed a binding contract to sell us this land. But if they can influence our representatives to just fail to appropriate the voter-approved money by May 1st, then the state of Florida will not be able to purchase the land by the October 12th deadline. The deal will fall through, and this chance at saving the Everglades will be lost. And May is right around the corner. We need your help now. Call your state legislators, call the governor, and tell them you support getting this land for Everglades water storage. Tell them not to let Big Sugar go back on their word. Tell them that no matter how much money they've been given, they still need to do the right thing. Right now, the Everglades needs you.